Today we're going to teach you how to calculate square foot, linear foot, and board foot and what the differences are so you can purchase wood a little easier and know exactly what you're getting and paying for. Let's start with square foot. You're going to want to multiply your length. So we've got 46 inches by 11 and a half. So 46 times 11.5 equals 529, which is our total square inches. Divide that by 144 because there's 144 square inches in a square foot. And we've got 3.67. This piece of plywood is 3.67 square feet. A standard four foot by eight foot would be 32 square feet. Plywood sometimes comes in five foot by five foot, which would be 25 square feet. To get your square footage on your piece of plywood, multiply your length by your width divided by 144 measured in inches. I was just gonna ask you, if there was like a particular time or instance when you would use square footage with, with lumber. Typically square footage is mainly a plywood calculation. Dimensional and live edge, you're not gonna use square footage unless you're maybe doing like a barn board wall or cladding a wall in some sort of wood. You'll normally be calculating how much square footage you need. So you would calculate, you know, our wall is 10 foot long by eight foot tall, we have 80 square feet. And then you would purchase, normally you wanna factor in about 20% waste. That's how you calculate your square footage for cladding a wall. You're not normally using square footage on live edge or dimensional. Let's cover linear footage and then we'll hop into board footage. A lot of people will sell dimensional lumber by the linear foot because it will be a common thickness, a common width, and then you're purchasing it by the length of the wood. So this is called D4S. It's dressed on all four sides. It's often sold, can't remember the exact price of this stuff, but white oak might be $10 a linear foot or $7 a linear foot. And you're basically paying per 12 inches of wood. You're gonna be paying $80 for that eight foot board. It doesn't matter if it's 12 inches wide versus eight inches wide or is a linear foot. The linear foot would be calculated by the seller of the wood based on the width. So they would do all that calculation. If it's twice as wide, your linear foot price is probably gonna be almost twice as much. Next up, we're gonna talk about board footage and we'll cover the funky live edge pieces as well, but we're gonna start with this dimensional piece of white oak. It's a volume calculation, not a square footage calculation. Volume calculation is more three dimensional where we include thickness. We've got 23 and a half for our length times eight and three quarter, so 8.75 times our thickness, which this is one inch. So we've got 205 cubic inches in this piece. And then we're gonna divide that by 144. There's 144 inches in a board foot, which is a volume measurement of 12 inch by 12 inch by one inch thick. So this piece of wood here is 1.42 board feet. Most lumber yards that sell rough lumber are gonna sell it to you by the board foot. So if you're buying live edge or dimensional and you have an eight foot piece by two foot by two inches, you would multiply those three divided by 144. That'll give you your total board foot price. Most lumber companies that sell raw wood like this or, or rough cut wood will say, hey, you know what? Our walnut is $15 a board foot. So then you would multiply the total board footage of that actual piece by 15 and that gives you the price of that piece. Board footage really is just calculating the volume of the wood. So oftentimes when pricing out live edge lumber, it's gonna go one of two ways. You're either gonna pay per piece or you're gonna pay per board footage again, like Jeff said, so. For these examples, let's go with $15 a board foot. That's kind of the general price in our area at a retail level. So we'll be using that number when calculating. So this piece has three separate width measurements. We've got about 13 and a half at the bottom here. We've got about 13 in the middle and we'll call it 12 at the top. So we took our three width dimensions, we added them together, and then we're gonna divide it by three to get our average width as part of our total calculation. So we're at 38.5, is all three of those added up? Divided by three. Divided by three, and now we're gonna multiply that average width by our length. So what's our length on that? Our length is 18 and three quarters. Times. Our thickness is two inches. So we have 481 cubic inches in here, divided by 144, and we've got 3.34 board feet. So if our price was $15 a board foot, and we were pricing this out for a retail purpose, we would multiply that 3.34 board feet times 15, and we would end up with a price of $50.13. Normally I would just round that down to $50 and that's the price it would get. Yeah, now this piece has a little bit more fluctuation in it. You're gonna have a much narrower top as well as a much wider bottom. So we will find the average width of this again. So we are nine inches at the top, 14 inches in the middle, 14 and a half at the bottom. So our average width on this board based on those three calculations, and it's kind of industry standard to do three calculations even if the board is 
10 foot or three foot, you take your average three. But we've got an average width of 12 and a half on this piece and the length on it is 36 times one inch thick, 450 cubic inches, divide that by 144 and you end up with 3.125 board feet. So we multiply that by our $15 retail walnut price. And this piece would be listed at $46.87. So these two pieces are virtually the same price, even though they look totally different. They're a very, very similar volume. And that's how we get to that final price. This one's a little more funky. I'll let you explain it. Yeah, so it's a little more unique. You've got some like bark inclusion here on the top. What I would consider to be non-usable lumber or, or space that's not going to be desirable. There's a couple of different schools of thought, a couple of different ways to go about it. And after you're doing epoxy pour or something like that, still may be a usable piece of lumber. Most lumber yards won't charge you for this kind of air space or this bark space, but some will. Our practices here, when we used to list stuff for, for retail at our in our store, we would take this measurement, this measurement, and that measurement, and this would essentially be non-charged because it's probably gonna be cut off and it's just kind of good practice not to be billing for unusable wood for most practices. Let's calculate how much this piece would be if sold at a retail level at $15 a board foot. Let's first do with the bark okay. to see what our price is and then we'll do without the bark to show you kind of the fair and we'll call it unfair or bad practice price. 15, 11, nine and a half. 35 divided by three because we took our three measurements. Our average width on that is 11.83 and our length was 36 and a half. Call it 36 and a half. Let's go 36, that, that's what I would do. I would round okay. down instead of calculating that angled edge times one inch thick we end up with 426 cubic inches divided by 144 to get our board foot total. And we have 2.95 board feet times 15. So this piece would be $44 if you're including all of the bark. These three pieces are actually very similar in price if including all that bark. How we would price it and most lumber yards should price it would be nine and a half at the bottom, 11 in the middle, six equals 26.5 divided by three. So our average width not including this is 8.83 times 36 for our length times one. 318 cubic inches divided by 144 gives us 2.2 board feet of call it usable wood or valuable wood. We multiply that by our $15 board foot price and we end up with $33. Some yards would yeah be charging that $44 range where this should be really billed out at $33 if calculating using that second method that we did. So you've got almost a full board foot of what's considered unusable lumber or, or waste material, et cetera. Yeah, so something to be careful of when you're purchasing wood. Double check in your calculations if there's already a set price on the wood. You can always double check with a tape measure and make sure that you're calculating properly. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps when you're out purchasing wood. And if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer. And if this brought any value, hit that subscribe button. It helps us grow our channel and bring you more content.